Welcome into the Lucas and Lucas podcast. Lucas Frankel, Mike Lucas here with you. And what a huge, huge season opening win for the Cleveland Cavaliers. 114-113 over the Brooklyn Nets. And we have some breaking news. Mike Lucas is now a diehard Cleveland Cavaliers fan. Was actually rooting against the Nets last night. One of the biggest traders that I've seen in recent memory. Um, But this was just an absolutely inexcusable loss for the Nets. Uh, Six-point lead with minute 24 seconds to go. You should never, ever blow that game. I thought that they needed Ben Simmons on the floor at the end because they didn't really have a true ball handler, and Donovan Mitchell just absolutely cooked them and just took the ball away from anyone he wanted to at the end. Um, Just just probably the most deflating season-opening loss I can ever remember for, for a team, and it almost gets got me to the point, Mike, where I'm just like, I'm – I'm so I I don't even want to watch another game the rest of the season. Like I'm so out after one game, and like I was so ready to old taste expose you for saying the Cavs were the best team in the league after four minutes. I was like so ready to just go to town, destroy you and ripping you to shreds. <laughs> and then that's blew the game and just every like ounce of excitement I had about the season. Not that I was ever that excited, but watching the flow of the game and seeing Cam Thomas score 36 got me really excited. And they awesome. all go out and lose the game, and all my excitement is gone. Right. I will start with the, the tweets and then we'll get to the game itself. Uh, I was doing a little experiment here. So obviously, you know, I work in Cleveland. Experiment? experiment. Yes. And I, I have the text messages <laughs> to prove. So we in Cleveland are so Browns centric right now and so Browns focused that nothing else matters here, Frank. Yesterday was the Cavs opening game of the season. We have not done any previews leading up. We haven't talked Cavs for a single minute before yesterday. We did one segment on the Cavs. Frank, we lost 20% of our audience in one segment. We have minute-by-minute minute metrics. We lost 20% of our audience as soon as we stopped talking Browns and talking Cavs. On an opening night for a team that's expected to be good this year, right? So I told Bull, who's on our show, and Bull hates game-by-game game overreactions. Hates it, especially in baseball or the NBA where there's so many games. So I told Bull, I'm going to tweet like a madman tonight. I want to see if it gets any traction. I just want to see if people, obviously, they, they, they don't care about it on the show. I'm going to see if anyone will buy into this. And the result was not really. They, they got way fewer interactions and likes and retweets than my my Brown stuff did. I don't think they're the best team in basketball after four minutes. I don't think they're going to go 82 and 0. Breaking news: They're going to lose a game this year. But it was purely a social uh, experiment, which I was then proven right that they just don't have as much interest as I thought. Now, to the game itself, Frank, it is weird to root against the Nets. I didn't really care who won. I lost my bet. That's what I, was, that's what I cared about. I what did you have? You, 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 you Cavs minus one and a half? I had Cavs minus two and a half. Oh, because when, when I saw the line, it was one and a half. But wow, you got it at two. Yeah, and a half. I had at two and a half. Either uh, way, you still so, would have lost. So they would have lost, yeah. So, But if the Nets had won, I would have I been fine. If Max Struess played awesome. He is exactly what the Cavs needed. Evan Mobley was exactly what we thought he was last year, and that's not good enough is the problem. They yeah, I was I was not not impressed at all by Evan Mobley, but go ahead. No, they need the Cavs. If they're going to reach the heights that they think they can. They need Evan Mobley to take that next step forward, and it's one game. No overreaction unless you're doing a social experiment on Twitter. Uh, he did not take that step that was necessary. And at the end of the day, it came down to Donovan Mitchell is a certified A-level player in the NBA. I, I don't know He's, if I would go that far. Hold on, hold on. I, He's no. not an A+. Plus. And there's a difference between the A's and the A+. Plus. Okay, you're going he's a not a. an A+. Plus. I think he's A-. minus. Sh- sure. He's a top 15 guy. Back end of the top 15. The Nets had a guy in that category who made plays down the stretch. The The Cavs did, excuse me. The Nets do not have a guy. As good as I, I like, as much as I like Bridges, he's not in that top 15 range yet. Maybe he will one day, but he's not there yet. And down the stretch when they needed a bucket and a stop, Donovan had the steal and the dunk, and it was a push-off. But that still got a on Cam Johnson because I like I was so mad at Cam. like I know like I I get what he was trying to do there but like the risk reward of I, like I agree you, you you can't flop in that situation you can't do it like like it but he made the shots when it mattered and the Nets even on that last possession Frank they were down one with nine seconds you gotta drive to the basket man you yeah you, you need a better hook. shot than that and and that was the difference in the game. I thought Cam Johnson take flopping like that and listen maybe you get that call and the. Maybe it, it works out great, and and they call the charge or the push off, which it probably was because Don. I thought Mitchell did clearly extend the arm, but like in that moment, just like just stay on him, like make him yeah. give up the ball. That the, the the 
the f- the emphasis in the net for the Nets defense in that moment should have been make Donovan Mitchell pass the ball because you saw in the Cavs on the other end they made Mikel Bridges give up the ball. You got to yeah. figure out a way to do it. You know, if if Strews beats you, like so be it. Like hats off to them, but you cannot let Donovan Mitchell beat you in that moment. I was so disgusted with Cam Johnson. I agree. For flopping in that moment. A couple other takeaways I had. I thought Ben Simmons was exactly the same as he's been. I disagree. When he played last year. I thought he was so not aggressive. He only took six shots. If the Nets, if the Nets are going to win anything this year, Mike, and like be competitive, Ben Simmons has to score between 15 and 20 points per game. We can't have this because there were a couple instances where he was like right under the basket, grab a rebound, and like would just like instead of like looking around, turning around, like jumping up and like letting it in, would like look to pass. He's so passive. I feel like he's got to be exponentially more aggressive on the offensive end. I was getting getting frustrated watching him and seeing his passiveness. Um he scored two field goals. One was an alley oop dunk. The other one was a, a a little bit of a hook shot layup with like I don't know four minutes to go in the game. I I was just expecting more. He's got to shoot at least ten shots a game. He's got to be in that ten to twelve range. So I agree on the second part of that. I do think he needs to shoot more, but the way he was able to when he was on the court, and I actually agree with you. Lee. I think even though you can't have him out there because they just foul him and that becomes an issue. Which is so, but, 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 but it's not even that though. They, they didn't foul him. They didn't foul him last night. So the whole fouling thing, like, if they're gonna foul him, like, foul him. Great, but you can't be. You can't play scared and have and and have that mindset when he's on the court. But go ahead. Sure. Uh, I, well, it was a, he was aggressive at certain points in the game in a way I had not seen at all last year. And I, maybe it's unfair to expect zero to hundred in game one, but I thought if last year was zero and that's that's the base, he looked. 30, 35% more aggressive at points in the game. And may- maybe just needs a little longer, which is, it's not fair for us as fans to be like, you need more time? Because we're giving you plenty of leeway, Ben. Like you've had, but now he looks healthy. He moved well. And there were points last season where he wasn't moving so well. He moved well. I I liked what I saw. It's not where he has to be. But I did think there were some things you could take away from yesterday and say, hey, it was not a total abomination which it could very well have been. I, w- I wouldn't call it an abomination at all. I was just, I was, I thought he'd be a little more aggressive than he was. That's all. That was my only, that's my fair. biggest takeaway. I thought there were plenty of opportunities for him to really make his presence known in that game. And he, I felt he maybe did, chose not to. And that's he fair. had the, without, with, and he had the opportunity to. So like, like I said, maybe I'm being a little too harsh on him for one game and, Maybe it, it'll take him a couple games, but I feel like if the Nets are going to be a competitive team this year, he's really got to put the emphasis on himself to be mm-hmm. a lot more aggressive on the offensive side of the ball. Like if you miss shots, like as long, okay. I just want to see, I just want to see, like, like don't stop being so afraid to fail. Take the shots, miss them. That's okay. Like I feel like if he if he just can just exert himself more, like he he has the ability to be like a Giannis type of dominant player on the court and. Seeing him be passive is just very – It's it will always be frustrating yeah. for me because this guy's got so much natural ability. So maybe I'm just frustrated by the fact I see so much raw ability and the fact that he's not like – because if I was like that, I'd be like a madman. Frank, and that's the last one we can move on because I know we got to move quick today. The way you just described how you feel about Ben Simmons is how 97% of Cleveland feels about Evan Mobley. Like to a T. They're very di- – in the ways they're passive, they're very different. But Cleveland wants Evan Mobley to grow a set and be a, an effing dog. Like, you have all the potential in the world to go be a guy who can fit into that quote-unquote unicorn category. And Frank, he hit 10 points yesterday. He had five rebounds. He's too talented to be to be producing that little in terms of actual tangible production. And I feel like what you just described, how you feel about Ben Simmons, is how I feel about Evan Mobley, how Earl feels about Evan Mobley, how a lot of Cleveland fans feel about Evan Mobley. And we had the discussion yesterday, and we could do this on a podcast another time, but I think you're either born with that dog in you or you're not. And I don't know if Ben Simmons ever had it, and maybe he lost it, but I'm not sure you could ever develop it. And I don't think Evan Mobley has it. And I have severe, and this is not based off yesterday, this is based off last year, severely tampered my expectations for him after where he was after a rookie and after he was after he was a sophomore. I don't think the ceiling is nearly as high anymore because I just don't think he has – that killer in him. And we need him to develop it, and we need Ben Simmons to develop it. I mean, Ben Simmons talks the talk, so I just see him walk the walk. So, like, he he talks yeah. the, he talks the game, and, like I said, maybe it's a little – it's probably unfair for me to overreact and 
be super critical after one game. You're much more complimentary of what you saw. So we'll see what happens going forward. We just got to talk about Cam Thomas real quick. 36 awesome. minutes off the bench. Awesome. Just came in. The Nets were like, were down, I believe, double digits when he started just hitting shots and single handedly kept them in the game. Missed a couple of key free throws down the stretch that yeah. sort of left the window open a little bit. But the Nets aren't in that game without Cam Thomas. He's been, you know, a lightning rod player in his time with the team. How sustainable is this? I don't know, but he's a bucket getter. He comes in and he just hits shots. I think I think him averaging 20 to 25 points a game off the bench this season is like completely realistic. And I love every moment that he's on the court because you know when he's he, got the ball in his hands, like something's gonna get is probably gonna happen. Except on the last possession, I was just that was more to me, that was more about coaching than it is about Cam Thomas heaving a last second shot. The Nets could have gotten a much better set and play design in that moment so i'm not gonna like rip cam thomas apart for missing the potential game winning shot but i thought overall he played an unbelievable game and yeah i love that he's getting the opportunity and i hope that he continues to get the opportunity because when he comes into the game like i said he hits shots and you know he's going to he averaged last season 0.73 points per minute which means if he plays starter minutes he's essentially averaging 30 points per game that's all i'm gonna say the dude when he's on the court is as talented a shot maker as there is in the league, despite the fact he's like 6'2 and not that athletic. He's in the Kyrie Irving category of difficult shot making. Different ways, but in that same category. And Jay Crawford today was like, I've never heard of Cam Thomas in my life. Who the really? hell is this guy? J- Jay's not a huge NBA fan. He likes the Cavs. He doesn't watch. He's not a casual like NBA watcher. He watches 162 baseball games. And he knows everything about everyone in baseball, basketball, just not his. And he's like, why doesn't this guy play more? And I was like, well, he doesn't do a lot of other stuff besides score. But like when it comes to scoring, that dude's a bucket. And it was cool to see someone like Jay, who doesn't watch basketball, like have their eyes open, like peeled open to the talent that is Cam Thomas. Because when he does play, man, he's so fun to watch. But I see why the coaching staff can't get frustrated with him. And I do hope that, like I said, I hope he gets to continue to play more minutes. And by the way, you were, you were pissing me off. I, I didn't realize you should have like texted me. This is like a social experiment. Cause I was getting, so I was like literally about to block you on Twitter. I was so angry. Um, that's why I was ready to just go to town on you when the game ended. <laughs> Luckily for you, Donovan Mitchell had that shot and saved you from all the embarrassment that was about to be inflicted on you. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. It, it, it was a fun, like that's the last time I'll tweet about a Cavs game probably all year, but that was okay, a fun good. social experiment. <laughs> 